Thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. I've been treating my phone as a tool more and more. This is not the device that I'm on all day, every day, but rather it's the device that has particular things built in that I need, but I don't need to be using all day. And because of that, I've set up this phone, the iPhone 14 Pro, in a very particular way to just maximize what I need to do with it. And after using this phone for the few months it's been out, I've treated the 14 Pro as kind of this ultra minimalist phone, and that is by intention, and it starts with the hardware itself. Now, I actually went back and returned my original 14 Pro Max that was silver because, first of all, the size, I'm just not all about it. I'll wait till next year, maybe that Ultra phone is actually coming, and then I'll spring for the bigger one. But that size just didn't do what I needed it to do in terms of simplicity. Every time I used it, I felt like I really had to give it my full attention, which is not something I wanted with my phone. Whereas the 14 Pro that I now have, I can just use with one hand, quickly pull it out of my pocket, do what I need to do, and put it back. It doesn't feel like it's you know requiring all my attention. And that's exactly what I love with this. And I also decided to go with the black version instead of the silver, and I absolutely love it. And I went for a full blackout theme here with everything on my phone. So the phone itself is black, but I also added a dbrand skin on the back just to cover that glass and bring the black to the next level because actually the glass on the back of this phone is more of a gray. I wanted the full blackout theme, and this just kind of helps with that. Now I'm actually gonna cover the phone itself, like how it's performing, all that kind of stuff in a different video, but just real quick, the black finish, eh, it's not the most durable. I actually have a few places where it's already rubbed off. We'll have to see how that lasts throughout the year, but you know, it is what it is. Like I said, this is a tool for me. So if it gets scratched and dinged up, I'm not too worried about it. But the skin is kind of all the protection I have here. I don't use a case on my phones very often, if at all, only if I'm going somewhere, you know, like rugged or, you know, somewhere where if I do drop my phone, it's gonna be a huge disaster then I'll put on a case, but in day-to-day -day life, I don't use a case. It's just this phone and I really like it that way. Now I'm going into my phone, you'll see it's very simple. There's not a lot here going on and it's really just everything I actually do on my phone. And there's really two setups here that I use mainly. I have this one, which is kind of just my everyday, you know, I'm around the house, doing errands, all that kind of stuff. And then I have a work mode, which adds a little bit more. And I'm doing this through focus modes. When work starts, my focus mode turns on and it has a few different things. I'll go into that in a second. And it just adds particular things that I need for work so that I can focus on those. And then when I don't need them, they go away. So I don't have to think about them. But here on the main screen, you'll see it's very empty. There's not a lot here. And I'm actually doing this thanks to an app called Clear Spaces, which gives you these clear widgets. These are actually widgets here that you can't see, which is kind of nice. And it lets me kind of not have anything on the top of the phone and have everything pushed down to the bottom, which just makes it easier to access. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know I have these kind of weird shaped thumbs that are very small. So having everything at the bottom is makes it a lot easier to reach. So I appreciate having it there. But that app doesn't actually look like much when you go to it. All you do is load in a wallpaper and then refresh the widgets and it mirrors what the wallpaper looks like, effectively giving you clear spaces, which is nice. It's a, it's a nice, easy way to do this. Okay, real quick, before we continue with the rest of the setup, I wanna thank this video sponsor, Anchor, and some of their latest GAN Prime chargers. Now, Anchor's been in this game for years, and they're definitely one of the best, and the GAN Prime chargers are delivering a few things. First, they are fast, and two, they are portable. And this is great for charging whatever devices you need. For instance, the new iPads just came out and those I've been really enjoying, but the battery life is not all that great. So I find myself charging them a lot. And these chargers let you do that, but also charge really anything else you need. For instance, this Anchor 737 charger is extremely slim and small, but it packs 120 watts of charging power. And because of that, you can charge multiple things. There are two USB-C ports and a USB-A port. And this slim design is great because one, it's portable, easy to take with you, but it also doesn't get in the way of other chargers you might have plugged into your wall. And it even has this stabilizer included that can suction on just in case it's a little long. So just in case it wants to fall out of the wall, this will stabilize it and make sure whatever you're charging stays charging. But if you want to take it up a notch, this is the Anchor 733 power bank and it is a wall plug and charger just like the other one and plug in over USB-C, USB-A. But the killer feature here is that you can unplug it from the wall and continue charging because it has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery built in. And speaking of being on the go, this is where the Anchor 615 USB power strip comes in. This is one of the most portable power strips I've seen and at first glance, it looks a little funny. It looks like it has no power cord 
whatsoever, but that's where the great design comes in. Under this rubber shroud, you have three feet of cable. So when you're on the go, it wraps up really nicely, but when you get wherever you're going, you have plenty of cable to plug in. And between these, you really have all of your charging needs covered, whether you're on the go, or at home and charging whatever devices you need. So if you wanna check these out, I'll leave links down below to where you can pick them up for yourself. And again, big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Now in terms of apps, it's very simple here for my day-to-day -day stuff. I have the phone, obviously, for making phone calls. I have Apple Maps, which is actually what I use most of the time. I have Google Maps installed for mainly offline maps. That's you know the best option for that, I think. I'll download maps if I need navigation and I'm going somewhere that's off-grid, which is pretty regularly. But when I'm just around town, I use Apple Maps probably every single day at the very least, just to look something up to see where it is. Now, the next is a folder, which is really where all of my other apps live. And this is my social folder. So I have Twitter, I have Instagram and Telegram. Telegram is what I use for work and communicating with all of my teammates. And that's really all I use it for. I don't use it for communicating with really anyone else outside of work, but I always need it available just in case something pops up. So it lives there. And I have the YouTube studio app where you can see how good or most likely how bad your video is doing and just keep up on it, answer, you know, comments, reply to anything that comes up. I'm in this app a lot. And usually when I'm pulling out my phone, I'll check it at least once. Oh, and by the way, if you're not following me on Twitter or Instagram, I'll leave all those links down below and everything else that I'm talking about today. I haven't been quite as active. Like I said, I'm just not on my phone all that often these days, but every once in a while I try to post something and you know, hopefully you would enjoy it, especially if you're enjoying these videos. Now the next app is the camera. It's just a stock camera app. I do have Halide installed, which is a more custom, you know, has more settings. And I do go into that if I need to do more, I guess, quote unquote, professional work. Like if I really care about what photo is coming out of my phone, then I will go into that app. But for my day-to-day -day quick captures, I just use the stock app and it works fine. But that is really one of the main reasons why I have the 14 Pro over the regular 14 or a lot of other phones, honestly. The camera system is extremely important to me. And now having that 48 megapixel sensor absolutely love it. I shoot in raw all the time on this camera. In fact, I actually bought the 512 gigabyte version of this phone just because I knew I'd be shooting in raw and those files are huge, but I absolutely love the quality you get out of them. I actually have prints on my wall that were taken on the iPhone. So I take, you know, photography seriously with my phone because it's really what's on me all the time. And I just like having access to it. So that's one of the main reasons why I choose this phone. Now, I also have the dock, and this is just kind of what lives there all the time. These are my by far most used apps. I have messages, obviously, not too surprising there. And I also have the stock mail app. That's just what I'm using right now. I actually use Superhuman on the desktop, and I love that app. It's my favorite email app ever. But I just had issues when I was on iOS 16 beta with Superhuman. I was just having, you know, compatibility issues. And I switched to mail because obviously I still needed to access my mail. And I just haven't switched back yet. But both those apps I think are excellent. Superhuman is, let's say, an expensive app. I did a partnership with them a little while ago, but I absolutely love it. If you are willing to pay for it, I think you will like it as well, but obviously it might not be worth it for you. And I found that the stock mail app still does everything I need it to do, so it works. I also have Safari, which obviously is Safari, and then YouTube. YouTube lives in my dock for a few reasons. One, I mean, it's literally my job, so it kind of makes sense that I would be on YouTube a lot, but also this has become kind of my default podcast player. Like I don't really listen to podcasts through a podcast app very often at all. It's pretty much through YouTube and some kind of version of a video podcast. And I listen to those all the time. I don't really listen to music all that often or anything like that. It's kind of YouTube all the time for me. And even though I play it a lot, I'm not actually watching a lot of YouTube. It's just kind of for background noise when I'm doing other things. And it really just lives in the dock for that reason, because I'm in it a lot. But that's kind of it for this main setup here. It's very simple, like I said, but there is a little bit more that goes into it. It's not like this is the only things I use on my phone. If you actually swipe over to the today view, this is where I have a few widgets set up. So I have weather here in Utah. We decided to skip fall for whatever reason, and it's now basically full blown winter. So it gets cold and it's been snowing a lot. So, you know, I just got to keep an eye on what the weather is. And then I have the parcel app, which is a package tracker, I'm getting a lot of packages for these videos for, you know, I just moved into this house, lots of things always getting shipped like seeing those there. This is also a paid app, but I do think it is one of my favorite options out there. It also has Amazon integration. So if you just order from Amazon, it'll automatically load it into this app and you can get that tracking. And then I have a HomeKit shortcut so I can control some of the smart things in my home. 
And then if you swipe the complete other way to the app library, I actually do access a few of these quite often. For instance, music or Spotify, like whenever I do listen to music or TikTok, you know, sometimes I gotta waste time, right? So I'll be in TikTok. Or if I need to add access like any of my financial apps or anything like that, so which I don't do on my phone that often, that's mainly a desktop thing for me. But if I need to, they're all here and I can quickly search. Sometimes I don't even go to the app library, I just go into Spotlight, search what I need and get going from there. I find that's just a little faster for me than trying to find the icon exactly where it lives. Now, if we go into the work focus mode here, there's really only a few differences. First is that I have the calendar widget front and center because I need to know what the next appointments are, what's coming up. It's also nice to know the date just at a quick glance. There's always things that I need to be on top of and that's why that's there. And for my calendar, I'm using Fantastical. This is an app that I had not tried for years and years. I know it's like a tried and true for many people. I just never use it. I use the stock calendar App, but after I switched to Fantastical, I absolutely love it. And the main reason for me that I love it is because of the widget. It just has better widgets than any of the other calendars I've seen. Now, the other widget I have is Things. So this is for reminders. This is a very popular app. Also kind of an expensive app, but it's kind of a one and done kind of purchase. I like it a lot. It works for everything I need. The other reason that I like this a lot is because of the widget as well. I think it has some of the better widgets for reminders out there. So for instance, it's letting me know I got to record this video so I can check that one off. And then next to that, I have a few different apps. So I have notes, always you know taking down notes during work. I have Trello, which is a board organizer. So you know for these videos, for instance, I know these are the projects I'm working on. These are the sponsors I have. This is when they're due, that kind of thing. And it just helps you keep track of all of that. We use that at work, at JFL Network, and I use it for all this personal stuff as well. That is kind of an app that I can't live without. I absolutely love it. And then I have the frame.io app. Now frame.io as a service is excellent. So basically what it is, is for people that produce content in a team setting and you need people to review those videos before they go live, well frame.io is the best way to do that. You can upload your video to that service and then someone else can watch that video and leave feedback or, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff you can do it. That's mainly what we use it for. You can leave feedback at different time codes like, hey, change this, maybe we should adjust that. And that is what frame.io is great at so we don't have to like upload to Google Drive or YouTube or something like that. It's just a much more streamlined way to get content creation collaboratively. Now this app really sucks. Frame.io was recently bought by Adobe, so I'm hoping that the app gets better. The app is horrible, but it's just one of those things I have to use on my phone every once in a while for work. Typically, I like to do it on the desktop because it's so much better. The app just, you know, sometimes I have to use it. Hopefully they fix that soon. And then for work, I'm in the YouTube Studio app even more. So I move that out of the folder up here. So it's front and center. But that's kind of it. I mean, I don't really add too much more. The bottom apps stay the same because I really want those to be muscle memory. So I could just access them immediately. But the other cool little tweak I did here is if you notice this blank row of icons, that was made by kind of a sister app to the Clear Spaces, which is called Transparent App Icons. So this is an app that helps you go through shortcuts to develop these app icons. It's kind of a whole mess a way to do it, but it's pretty simple. The app makes it a little easier for you to do. So that way I can add the things I need for work, but everything on the bottom still looks the same. Now, the other part of this setup is with lock screens. Now with iOS 16, you can you know customize the lock screens and you can have multiple versions of the lock screens, which I really like. And more importantly for me, you can have these set to different focus modes. So in my regular mode, it's this wallpaper, which I absolutely love. It's not quite black, but gives you a little splash of color. And there's really only a few things I have here. I have the date, the time, and the sunset. Since the time just changed recently, it gets dark really early and when I film, I like to use natural light, so it just gives me an idea of when the sun's gonna set so I know I can kind of plan my day around it. That's kind of it. I don't have any other widgets or anything here. It's a very simple lock screen. Usually, I just need to know the time, if anything. But when it goes into the work focus mode, I have a few widgets. It's the same stuff up top. I added the Fantastica widget and the Things widget, so I can see my tasks that are coming up, or I can see what events are coming up as well. And that's really all I added. I have a different wallpaper here, just so I kind of know the different mode. It looks different, but it's a subtle change. It's not a lot different. I mean, even though you can customize the lock screen, there's still not too much that Apple lets you do, but you know, 
take advantage of what you can. And honestly, the reason why I can keep this phone so simple, I mean, that's pretty much it, that's my setup, is because I've been utilizing the different devices that I have more and more. I, you know, I have an Apple Watch, I have an iPad, I have a Mac, and before I realized that I was actually just using my phone a lot, and I would do tasks on my phone that were much better utilized on other devices. So I felt like I was just doing like a, a worse version of it on my phone. So like I said, I've kind of like transitioned away from using this all the time. And I think that's kind of the best way to do it if you have access to other devices, which luckily I do, and lets me have my phone exactly the way I want. It's streamlined, it's simple, there's not much to it, but it is still extremely powerful and lets me stay on top of every single thing I need to do. And for me, I'm really enjoying optimizing what these products do rather than maximizing every single thing they could do, if that makes sense. But yeah, that is what's on my iPhone 14 Pro. It's a simple setup, but it's the one that works for me.